Hey guys, what's up? So we continue the discussion on strategy to a science and technology. This is we'll talking about a basic approach. What uh, person think about science and technology and how should they perceive science and technology? This is presented by me, Roman Seni, and this robo will stay with us forever in this course. And do rate and review this course. Like give five star if you feel like this course is good. And do it for all the educators on an academy so that we know who is a good educator and who is a great educator. Now, if you have any doubts or queries, you can ask in the comments below and do share it uh, for the benefit of others. And you can follow me on an academy on this link. So let's get started. See, typical approach of an aspirant for any subject of any examination on any uh, country of earth, it should be like they should go through syllabus first. Okay, what is this examination talking about? What are they talking about? Then you should go through previous year question papers. So you should know there is a mismatch between like the syllabus and the question paper or no. If there is no mismatch, then you should always focus on syllabus. If there is 80% overlap, you should focus on syllabus, which happens with UPSC. Then you need to go about shortlisting of books that these are the books which I'll be reading. These are the resources which I'll be referring to. These are the tuitions or coaching centers where I'll be going. Then you need to develop your own study approach that this is how I'll approach the topic. I'll give 30 days, I'll give 40 days, I'll give 50 days, I'll give one month, I'll, I might give one week because I'm a doctor or whatever it is. Then you go through either like reading from coaching notes or making your own personal notes. Then you develop a revision strategy how you can do it. And once you have revised once, then you have to revise twice, then you have to revise thrice, then you have to practice the questions and you have to repeat it. So this is an approach of an aspirant. Now, whenever it comes to science and technology, people study polity, geography, history, environment, economy, art and culture, everything they study. But when it comes to science and technology, these are the faces they make. Like very, very sad faces as if they are about to vomit, so, which is true because science and technology is like a foreign language. It's like learning Chinese or French or German or Spanish if you don't know one. It's very, very difficult to learn. And I know I can relate to it because I have seen many of my friends who are from like DU and from non-science uh, background, they face a lot of troubles. And they make faces like these sad faces. And But that is not the way to go about it. They think that science sucks. It is cold, heartless. There is no place for emotions like there is in humanities. It is just based on logic, calculations. It's like robots. It's absolutely ruthless. But if this is your approach, then you are going to fail miserably. So first thing first, I need to change your approach of what you think about science and technology. Otherwise, there is no point of discussing this course. So why science and technology? Why do we need science and technology? So irrespective of everything, knowledge of basic sciences is part of being human. It is not Salman Khan's NGO. It's just like being part of, like part of becoming like a human being. Understanding how the world around us work. See, I am making this video. You are watching this video, and there is like you might be like one kilometer away from me, or you might be sitting in USA, ten thousand kilometers away from me. Still, you will watch this video. Everything is possible because of science and technology. You wake up. The first thing you do might be like turning off the fan or turn off the AC or go to washroom or do whatever you feel like. But everywhere you go, it is like surrounded by science and tech. So let's say I have, we have this rating and review system on of courses. So if this was not there, then we would never know who, which educator is better, which is worse. So if you can rate and review this course, I'll know that I have done a good job. Similarly, scientific knowledge will help in rational, logical and analytical decision making which is your part and parcel of becoming a civil servant. Like literally science and technology is the future of everything. Everything which you are going to do in your life, it will revolve around science and technology. Now progress, be it economic, agricultural, social, political, economic, any progress, scientific obviously, health wise, longevity, physics, chemistry, space travel, exploration of oceans, everything is ridiculously, completely, hopelessly, utterly, miserably dependent on science and technology. So without science and technology, you cannot think of governance, you cannot think of administration. It is absolutely pointless. One has to be aware of recent developments in the fields and basic IT skills like while I was in Labasana, so they used to take these IT classes in. So that was like emphasized upon for those people who do not know the basic skills. So it is very essential to deliver your services as a civil servant and you will be asked to implement policies very early in your career. So you need to know about them. For example, like e-governance is a topic. E-governance in the aid of farmers is a topic. So it is like motto is minimum government, maximum governance. Okay, like without the human beings. So what are the points in favor? Like corruption is inversely proportional to e-governance. In 70s and 80s, there was a lot of corruption 
like still there is a lot of corruption but back, back that time it was like 10 20 times anecdotally speaking why anecdotally because there is no evidence because there is no science and tech there is no records of anything so you can't know what the kind of corruption is now like at least the awareness level is much higher thanks to uh, e governance and everything is more transparent now it is one of the route to root out a corruption so for those of you are sleeping it's absolutely correct route to root out corruption now it is also there to minimize human interface using science and technology so as as few women are involved like see computer are not corrupt human beings are we we can make them corrupt by like feeding some corrupt information otherwise they are not corrupt they don't want money it's it's human beings who are corrupt so if you minimize the human interface then governance will improve for sure it is better faster and cheaper service delivery to the citizenry and better implementation and monitoring of all the programs and schemes so that is why you need to have basic information of science and tech so analyzing the previous year question papers now coming to the point that why marks are there and everything so in 2011 you have 15 then 16 then 13 16 15 13 now some people might some questions are from environment and ecology some might cover them in current affairs some might cover them under india year book but like science includes all these and these are the questions which are asked from science so on an average 15% of the paper comes from science and technology you can see this graph the most consistent graph you will ever see and in mains also like ever since i have given in 2013 14 15 and now 16 so 16 is not done yet but for last 3 years 25 to 30% paper in mains comes from science and tech so that is why you have to study for marks now this is just to give an example like physics or formal science like mathematics and logic they are formal science and like this is uh, like pico nano this is micrometer okay femtometer now this is like parallel universe and this side is string theory so this is like scale everything on earth which you know fit will will fit in this scale for example earth are here and let's say atom is here so everything is from earth to atom here like for example visible universe is 10 to the power 27 meter big so physics will deal with like atom cell life sciences will deal with like human beings social sciences will again deal with human beings and earth and space deal with like everything so these are the basic classification of sciences you can read here just to give you an answer question like they may, might ask you about this scale some question sometimes but this is just to get started now basic strategy one is like uh, true or not like current affairs is the main force behind science and tech especially in mains examination prelims mein fir bhi wo ncert se they ask some questions but in mains examination they don't ask anything so largely it is based on current affairs but you will not understand much of the current affairs unless you have mastered the basics so just focus on four to five keywords per terminology then move ahead for example i r n s s what is the full form what are the total number of satellites what are the regions it will be covering who launched it when it will be completed when it will be functional who is funding it how why are we not dependent on gps these are the points which you should know so the keywords you need to know then focus on range more than depth it is basic principle of upsc do not go deep just focus more on range now day to day news key or news are absolutely key for that you have to listen to the hindu and pib analysis which we do every day at an academy now clarity of thought is very essential because you have a huge potential to get confused now it is essential to know such basics even if you are not a upsc aspirant now you have to pay attention to whatever is happening around you so everything in the exam it will be from current affairs but it will be connected to static syllabus or portion this is true for mains not so true for prelims so like you just master and know the facts correlate with what you read in current affairs and focus more on schemes programs and just go to ministry's website if you have some doubt sometimes but don't spend too much time there uh, whether it's a state subject or not etc so finally it is both static and dynamic but you need to master static before you can go on to dynamic Uh, it is an all-time UPSC favorite. Fifty percent question in prelims are almost guaranteed. Logic is your only way out in preparation for science and tech. Smart work is the only way. Hard work does not work in science and tech. Make like uh, like concrete goals. Do smart preparation rather than cramming the points. And correlate topics. Make a network. Correct different items. Again, I am telling you, hard work will not work. Smart work will. So thank you for watching this lesson. Have an awesome day.